The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. All right, here we are, Brothers on Law. I'm Rob Mandel. And I'm Larry Mandel. And a big shout out to Debbie Mortgage Mom again. What a great show. Hey, Larry, I don't know if you remember, but when we were kids, you know, there were a couple of people on the block who had cool cars, really cool cars. And I remember one that I liked a lot, and it, and it also had this unusual license plate. And for some reason, I committed the numbers or the letters to memory. And one day, I'm looking at the same car, and it had a completely different license plate. Oh, that's weird. It was so weird. And I thought, as a kid, I was losing my mind. And uh, later, I learned that the wife who drove that car, usually, had switched plates, had put a different license plate on it, so that she could follow her husband around and make sure, you know, to see if she was he was having an affair. But the husband wouldn't identify the car? Well, That's he, he kinda... must have known the license plate, yeah. so that was her logic. But she could have easily, instead, hired a good private investigator to find out what was up. And we're That's a lucky. Great segue to you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and we're lucky to have with us one of the top private investigators in the Los Angeles area, Mr. Ed Santiago. Private Welcome invest- to the show. Welcome, Mr. Santiago. And you're a private investigator in Westlake and you specialize in cases involving civil, criminal, and family law. Hey, let Ed tell us what he but does. I, this is our this is our intro, Rob. So tell us more about yourself. Yes, um, we've been uh, in uh, the Westlake San Fernando Valley area for the past 35 years, and uh, we we service uh, uh, the community on civil, business, and criminal cases, and uh, people frequently hire us to uh, determine the issues concerning custody cases, uh, divorces, um, elder issues, uh, etc. How long have you been in the business? 35 years. That's a long time. That's a long time to be doing this kind of work. I mean, it, it's crazy work sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but, but it's exciting. Uh, it, it changes every day. The, 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 the drama is, is part of the, the engagement for us. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like a James Bond, a little bit. A little You're bit, a yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I don't know if you want to put it that way, but, I mean, we use uh, private investigators quite a bit. And, um, you know, what we would do is, you know, check up on to see uh, how something may have come down, you know. Uh, what do you mean come down? Well, I mean, in other words, someone got hurt. You know, in our, in our business, we, we handle personal injury cases. So we may want to uh, get a statement from a witness, you know, before the other guy gets at him and, and, and before they have a chance to get you know, uh, poisoned or, you know, somehow tampered with or influenced by someone else. We want to get their their true uh, raw memory of what, what went down or how, how something happened. So, right? Ed, can you weigh in on this? What yeah, do you do yeah. in, in that it, regard? It, it, it's, it's very important to, to immediately yeah, respond to a situation like that on these slip and falls or injury-related matters with his witnesses. We need to be able to document uh, their observations clearly, so that uh, so, so the lawyer, your, your 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 law firm can move forward with whatever your position may be on on the case. Because memories fade, and it's good to do it right off the bat, right? Oh, critical that that you immediately start the case and the investigation because yes, people do do uh, their 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 view and their observations to have a tendency to change quite quite often. And when you interview these people, is it on the phone? Is it in person? How do you do that? Uh, many times we like to do it in person uh, so that we have that eye contact and, and we can measure, you know, their uh, their 
their truthfulness and stuff, their integrity, and you know their their observations, uh, and and freely question them. But we do it on the phone as well. And you know, you you seem like a pretty relaxed, kind of low key guy. I mean, is that the approach you take with people that you're trying to get information from or investigating? Yes, I, I think uh, it's important to to for for you know as the interviewer to to be the interview to be comfortable when you engage them. So if you're kind of relaxed and laid back, they they kind of feel like they're they're more in control of the situation yeah. it's not threatening at all right you're yeah. not they're not putting their guard up yes you don't want them doing that yes i don't want them to withhold yeah. or you know miss you know their ego to alter the, the exactly. facts right. Do, you, right do you also do stakeouts we do stakeouts yes you know, and what is can you explain what a steak? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but yeah, can you explain no, what it is? That's not where you're cooking out with a steak or anything like that. No, that's a steak house. <laughs> oh, okay. not a steak out. <laughs> so it, people will hire us uh, to observe people coming in and out of the residence. So we'll stake out a position on the street, uh, or we'll stake out positions at uh, different uh, exits and entrances in, into the residential area. And, uh, and and observe and report uh, what's what's unfolding to the client. Uh, and what would be the purpose of that normally? What 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 are the circumstances that you're doing a stakeout for? Uh, frequently, it could be a divorce issue, a custody issue, infidelity. Uh, people are trying to see where the the husband or the wife may be going, who they're meeting with. That's what I was alluding to before in in my introduction, right? And can and I hear? A, I'm sorry, Rob. Well, go ahead. I want to just hear like a juicy story, like <laughs> a divorce situation that you know, without using names. Why does it have to be a juicy divorce situation? Oh, uh, anything then. So well, but I you know, before you do, I, I I you know what? Why do? Why do you think people want to know? whether there's infidelity i mean i mean what is i mean if you've or if you've got to the point where you're hiring a private investigator isn't there already you know to to see if your wife or your husband is cheating on you isn't there already a problem oh yes uh certainly there's a problem when when they come here but it's important to understand the, the reality uh people's minds and perceptions kind of change pretty rapidly and uh Frequently, they need to determine conclusively uh, and get gain clo- to gain closure I see. And, and be able to move forward. Right. That's, that's well yeah. stated. All right, juicy story. <laughs> so we got a call from a client uh, in New York, and uh, she had a uh, long-distance relationship uh, with a, uh, an, a male living in Westlake Village. And uh, he owned his own company and uh, was divorced probably about three or four years. And uh, uh, they had a, a, an appointment or a meeting and scheduled, but uh, he t- changed it at the last minute and uh, that raised some suspicion. So she gave us a call and uh, asked us to keep an eye on him to see what, in fact, he was really up to. So we... I got to the location and uh, waited for about two or three hours and expecting him to pull out in his Lamborghini because he was driving a Lamborghini. Uh, at least, you know, that's what we understood. So uh, there's a shabby. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, about three, four hours passed. We see a small compact car pull up and and uh, park in front of his residence. And, and we wondered, well, who could that possibly be? And as it turns out, we he came out. He he got into the vehicle. Uh, a female was driving the car, so they drove about four to five miles, pulled over to uh, the Westlake Inn, and uh, he came out of the vehicle and uh, went into uh, a group of uh, friends where it appeared to be a, a festive a party event in progress. So as it turns out. Uh, we didn't know who the gal was, but uh, we later learned that it was a lift operator, uh, and it was not anyone that he was involved with. And uh, in the time that we were actually observing him uh, in in the lounge area, interacting with uh, with his uh, with his friends, uh, 
we saw him engage with a couple of couples, but nothing nothing suspicious happened. Mm. Nothing, you know, questionable in his behavior. Okay, so that's the juicy story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, because it sounds like you absolved this poor fellow of of these suspicions that the long distance lover had. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was pretty reassuring to know that he wasn't. In fact, doing yeah. something that she was convinced that he was doing. Right. So the only female contact he had, at least on that day, was with a lift operator who was giving him a ride to the... The Lamborghini must not have been working that day. Yeah. Or it something. did seem suspicious at first, though, didn't it, Rob? Yeah. yeah. Have you suffered or been injured by someone else's negligence? When you need a legal team that will stand up for what is right, won't give up the fight and obtain justice, call 818-886-6600. Mandel Trial Lawyers specializes in personal injury cases of all types. Whether it's a car accident, product or premises liability, dog bite, or a catastrophic injury, Mandel Trial Lawyers are there for you when the fight is worth it. Call now for your free consultation, 818-886-6600. Let the scales of justice tip in your favor. So can you think, well, what's the craziest thing right. that you've ever seen? Just the most outlandish or, or bizarre thing. Can you think of something? Um, cases that I've been involved in? Yeah. Uh, child custody cases are probably some of the most difficult cases. I bet. Uh, because you have people that are, are, are angry, upset, and... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of money and, and, and control issues in play, and uh, and people can get very nasty yes, and, and, and very vengeful and, and toxic yeah. uh, that it crosses over into, into the children. Especially, I mean, more recently, we were in a, on a case in downtown Los Angeles, you know, where the children were placed on the stand to authenticate what I had, what we had observed during our, a custody. A visitation surveillance where the gal had uh, was popping pills and uh, oh. was drinking alcohol driving erratically and and uh, the daughter was actually uh, had to help her mother during the visit visitation custody out of the vehicle into the hotel room and uh, they denied it for about four or five months until trial came and when trial arrived uh, unfortunately the, the daughter who had observed it had to be placed on the stand and uh, oh. And had to verify the the that event, which is a trauma. Yeah, that's for, very for, for traumatic. Nine year old. Did you oh, have that on nine tape? Nine year old kid. Did you have that on tape? Yeah, we we videotaped uh, the gal helping uh, the young gal helping her mother uh, into the room as she vomited. See, that's what happens in a lot of these cases where if somebody denies something and you catch them on tape, then there's what we call impeachment evidence to show that they're not telling the truth. Yes, yes, and uh, this was uh, this was authenticated because they were denying it uh, vehemently, the lawyers, uh, the parties, and 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 it wasn't until uh, the daughter they they compelled the daughter to go on sta- on the stand to testify because they continued to to deny it even until the, the until that time arrived. Yeah, that that that's some sad stuff. So what what other kinds of uh, things? Uh, does a private investigator do? You know, we we are engaged by lawyers, private parties to collect um, uh, informal, you know, information that could be used uh, to leverage their 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 arguments, their cases. Um, For instance, social media is that a big thing? Where you look into the social media diary? and find out information which is inconsistent with their alleged behavior? Oh yes, that's exciting. The, the social media uh, has has really changed the dynamics of the investigative field in that you can now you know f- capture their blogs, the statements that they may make, video, uh, things that, that will support or you know uh, the position, you know, or the case that they may, that may, be, they may be faced with. So. See, I have this thing where people will tell me that, um, well, my Facebook is private, so they can't look into it. Is that true? Uh, If they switched on the right um, mechanism on, on 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 the webpage, possibly, but we can still get in through backdoor mechanisms without them, without their knowledge. Like where their friends are tagging them, so to speak? 
we we can get their list of friends even if they block them. We can get uh, their their messaging uh, and and texting at times. So really, social media has become because uh, experts like yourself can get into these. Uh, various forms of of social media like Facebook and I assume Instagram and things like that. It's almost become a place where you where a person catches themselves in a lie, in a way. You know, in other words, if they're saying, "Hey, I don't do this and I don't do that," and then you, you all you have to do is find it there on their pages, you've uncovered them as not being truthful. Right. And I often, you know, recommend to the client that they do at least their own due diligence, you know, check the, the social media accounts. And then if they're, they've, they've closed the account or, or marked it private, then, then they can hire us and, and we'll go and backdoor it and, and see really what uh, the, the activity is. Yeah, and that's happened to us where we, you know, the, the client is telling us, you know, yeah, because of my back injury, I can't do, you know, I can't... Uh, take hikes with my kids anymore or I can't ride a bicycle and then the next thing you know uh, we check the social media you know hopefully using a guy like yourself to really be thorough and there they are doing these all these things and and like we're faced with a big dilemma you know where we probably have to you know uh, cut cut the ties to the client or reconsider the value of the case yeah Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, brothersonlaw.com. Are there certain tricks of the trade that you can tell us about? Uh, Willingly tell us about? Yes. I I think so. I mean, sometimes you need to, you know, if you're sitting on a vehicle uh, on a a, uh, disability case for for, for days and, and there's no activity, sometimes we have to kind of create a scenario to compel you know, the party to come out and, and do something at least that that, that we can videotape and, uh. and use, you know, in, in, in the, the litigation later. So, yeah, we, we need to motivate them. We may call them mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and ask them about their vehicle and, uh, and they may come out and open the hood or change the tire and, and that would be something we would covertly, you know, videotape so we can use right. it later. Mm-hmm. How do you become a, a private investigator? What do you have to do to become a private investigator? Well, you need to work under a licensed private investigator for a total of about 6,000 hours, or I believe it's two years. Uh, and uh, once you do that, then you, you're qualified to take the examination, the state board examination. And if you pass that, you, you can get, become licensed. In Is the that the process you went through? Uh, yeah, well, I started uh, in asset subrogation. Uh, in, th- in those days, there was insurance mandates, but there was a lot, not a lot of enforcement, so a lot of people had coverage that was insufficient to cover the policy limits. So they would hire someone like ourselves to, to determine what their holdings are to see if it was worthy of litigation or collection. Okay. And so now, is there a difference between private investigator and private detective because you know i have the image in my head you know like the humphrey bogart characters or you know the the uh film noir characters that were you know always basically in those movies in those settings maybe they'll start off on a divorce thing but then it it veers into a crime and they're basically working not with the police but but at the same time as the police and they're always like a step ahead of the cops on you know uh trying to figure out what happened and uh have you ever been in that setting or been used to to you know hey you know it's a cold case and the cops are not doing anything and we want to find out what happened to to you know our loved one have you ever been in that kind of setting uh yes uh we've been uh in, involved in those type of cases, uh, typically, um, let me give you an example. We had an infidelity case: a uh, wife and couple, well-known entertainment industry couple. One, the guy was involved in a relationship with the the assistant, and uh, as it turns out, the the assistant. Uh, uh, was married and she ended up getting a divorce because of the disclosure and we subsequently had to uh, 
videotape and surveil uh, the gal, and, and we did so for, for, for about a month. And uh, wow. she ended up, as it turns out, committing suicide. Oh, wow. And sad. Uh, we, we had to step back and, and look and at the role of what everybody was involved in and, and what, because apparently she was so emotionally distraught and overwhelmed that she had, had given up. She had lost her husband, had lost a relationship, and, and you know, it's, it's a very sensitive situation. Wow, downward sp- spiral. And so did you feel that the, what the information that you uncovered played a role in her uh, uh, decision to take her own life? Was, was there something that, that, you know, you felt that uh, was, you know, unfortunately intertwined that way? Uh, it, when you're dealing with domestic uh, issues and there's, there's a lot of uh, combat and, and uh, instability, it's, it's hard to say. She, the, the gal was... was as it turns out later, was uh, was receiving some psychiatric help. She was on medication. So th- there's a lot of possibilities. Right, right. A lot of things in play. Yeah. We're Larry and Rob Mandel, the brothers-in-law, here on Go Country 105. Do you have a legal issue you need help with? We want to hear from you. Find us on Instagram and send us a message. Then tune in on Saturdays at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country 105. Have you ever been hired to try and figure out a cold case? We probably have, but nothing specifically comes to mind. Yeah. What's, what's a good outcome? Have you Can you relate to us some cases where it's been like a positive outcome? Yeah, in the case of the, the, the custody issue, where, where the issues were the money, the, the $20,000 a month in spousal support, and the $15,000 additional on child support issues that came into play when it was determined that... Uh, the the mom uh, had all of these alcohol drug issues and, and clearly was uh, not paying you know a healthy uh, time with their their children she she lost custody of uh, of, of the children and and the the child support aspect yeah. of it here's another yeah. thing you can find out assets of people yes today you can find out uh, individuals uh, hard assets in their, their bank accounts their wages mm-hmm. and that's they part owe of your, your money. Job. Right? Huh? You want to know that if they owe you money, right? You, you want to attach those and make an right. assessment as to whether or not it's worthy of pursuing the case. And sometimes in our in our field, we will have to check it, depending on the person who caused the accident and their insurance policy. As a backup, we have to check to see what their assets are to cover all bases to get a proper recovery for our clients. And At, you'll, you'll do that, right? Assets in excess of policy limits, yeah. That's Gotta good. look at it. Hey, so we were talking about, um, you know, film, uh, uh, private eyes and whatnot. Do, do you have any uh, favorite uh, fictional private eyes from film or TV? Magnum P.I. Magnum. Yeah, Tom ah, Selleck. Remember, yeah. He lives in Westlake. Yeah. Have you ever met him? Uh, no. no. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you what restaurant he, after the show, I'll tell you what restaurant he goes to so you can meet him. <laughs> was that, was, but was that realistic or is it more drama? No, the, you, it can get pretty cagey. It can get pretty uh, uh, traumatizing in, for, 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 for all the parties involved in those cases, yeah. Have you ever been threatened? Countless times. You know, really? A lot of people. I've been stalked. I've, I've, really? I, I've been profiled, yes. Mm-hmm. Do you carry a, a gun? Are you licensed to carry a gun? Uh, I carry a concealed weapon, yes, I do. Okay. And that is uh, obviously for your own protection. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and and we do executive protection also. Oh, you do. Yes. Oh, okay, for actors and yeah, individuals and domestic disputes and you know on on uh, th- threats uh, and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of um, conflicts in, in the work environment, etc. So a bodyguard, mm-hmm. basically, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, that comes in handy. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we want to thank you uh, a lot for coming in today. Tell us how our listeners, you know, who, who may need a, a private investigator like yourself, and you do a lot of uh, really varied and wonderful things, um, how can they reach you? Uh, we are based, uh, our, our office, main office is in Encino, 18075 Ventura Boulevard. Uh, we're licensed under Detect All Investigations. I, I founded that company back in 
5. And our telephone number is 818-881-3908. Can you repeat that? Telephone number is 818-881-3908. <laughs> all right. Well, great, Ed. It's so interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, we could do this all day, really. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to move on to our to tip of the day. Yeah. And we do this segment just to remind our listeners of some helpful, handy hints that to uh, remind them that they can cross off and uh, off their list. And so summer is here. Your utility bill is probably growing as we speak. Well, not quite. Summer's not quite here, but it will be soon. And so uh, call your u- local utility company to do an energy audit for free. This valuable audit will help you find some areas that you can save energy, which means money off your d- utility bill. And also remember to change your AC filter often. Call a a licensed AC contractor and service it and have it ready for summer and working efficiently. Good tip, Rob. All right, I'm going to tell you a California law on the books. You're going to tell me if it's true or false. Um, Yeah. Okay, so is it legal to sleep in a parked vehicle? I'm going to ask Ed that. Is it legal to sleep in in your parked vehicle? I, I'm going to guess on that. I, I, I believe it is. Well, this law in Cathedral City near Palm Springs. Oh, it's it's false. By the way, it's false. Yeah. Well, in Cathedral City, apparently, it's you. You're not supposed to sleep in any automobile other than. That's oh, right. okay. It's it, here. I'll read other it to than you. Parked on a sidewalk. Yeah. No person shall sleep in any thing. automobile or other vehicle parked on any sidewalk, street, alley, or public place, including any approved private street or right of way within the corporate limits of the city. So apparently, in Cathedral City. No sleeping in your car. Ed, have you ever gone, you know, done surveillance on someone to see where where they live and then find out they're sleeping in their car? Oh yes, quite. Fr- that that's happened a, a number of times. We'll find that uh, they're actually sleeping in, in their trailer uh, in, in in Walmart parking lots. Yeah, you know, and it's it's uh, it has happened. Yes, that's a tough one, huh? Yes. Hey, there's a segue for Ed in his profession, and so I think it's time for Mandel messages. Now it's time to check the Mandel message box. And this one's perfect here from Victoria from El Monte. And she writes in, Rob, all right, okay, I'll I'll do it. I'll I'll do it. I had a feeling my husband is a cheater and I hired a private investigator. My suspicions were correct and I have video that my private investigator captured. Can I use this in court? He doesn't know I have it. Well, what do you think, Larry? Yes, that's what we've been talking about to impeach or to show that the person is not credible in what their statements or what their behavior is. So what do you think, Ed? Uh, I, I think it, it's, it closes the, the issue when, when you have video uh, that something's actually happened and, and you can support it uh, under cross-examination. Yes, it. The thing is, the only thing about that is we have no-fault divorce here in in California, and I just don't understand how relevant it would come up. You know, does it matter if the guy was a cheater or not? They want a divorce, they get a divorce. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think you're right on, Rob. Yeah. I mean, for cheating, other cases, like our personal injury cases, yes, that, no. Well, uh, I think it's about time that we have for the day. It's all the time we have. And we want to thank Ed Santiago, private investigator, for coming in and spending your Saturday morning with us. If you missed any part of this show or you want to check out some of our previous episodes, go to podbean.com and listen to all the Brothers on Law shows there. Also, check out our website. On Brothers on Law. Yeah, Brothers on Law. Thank you, Rob. And, and email, email us your questions to brothersonlaw.com. And you can find our prior episodes on our website as well. True. So tune in next week at 8 a.m. right here on Go Country. And remember to let the scales of justice tip in your favor. The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice.